welcome back to my channel. Drinking enough water is of course so important for our health. We learned back in school that our bodies are made up of at least 60% water and that we can go for about a month or more without food but only 3-4 to four days without water. Today's video is going to cover a little more about the water that we're drinking, this thing called microplastics, and how we can avoid drinking or eating microplastics in our diet. So first up, what are microplastics? They're basically tiny pieces of plastics that are less than 5 millimeters long. That's about the same as the size of a sesame seed or smaller. They come from the plastic bottles of water that we drink, the disposable food containers that we get, and generally larger plastic rubbish that break down into smaller and smaller pieces and enter our food chain. Now, why is this important? At the end of 2018, scientists found microplastic in human poop for the first time. That's right, our poop. That means we've been eating them. Reports have been varied, but the average human adult could be consuming anywhere between a teaspoon to a card's worth of plastic a week. Eep. To be fair, this is still considered only a recent discovery, so scientists are still trying to find out what kind of effects this will have on our bodies. But, I mean, we're talking about drinking tiny pieces of plastic here, so at absolute best case scenario, it could be that there is a neutral effect, but as a worst case scenario, it could have a negative effect on our body and health. Now, before you start freaking out, to give some context, because disposable single-use plastic has been used for decades now, there's literally microplastic everywhere. So we can't avoid it, but this is definitely a food group that we do not want in our diet. So what we can do is try to reduce the amount that we're consuming. So in this video, we're going to go through four things that you can do to avoid drinking or eating microplastics in your diet. First up is bottled water. With bottled water, the water could be sitting in that plastic bottle for months before you actually consume it. And during that time, it's been transported and stored in conditions that we have no idea about. Extreme temperature changes increases the chances of chemicals leaching out of the plastics and into the water. So the first thing that we can do to try to reduce the amount of microplastics in our diet is to avoid drinking out of single-use plastic bottles as much as possible. Studies have shown that bottled water has at least twice the amount of microplastics than tap water. If you live in a country that tap water isn't drinkable, there are options like getting a filter installed to your tap or buying a water filter jug. I just use a Brita jug that has a filter installed that filters out particles to a 0.5 micron size, which is about 1 12th of the width of a hair. Now you may be thinking, Sarah, the Brita is made out of plastic, isn't that counterintuitive? With the Brita, the plastic is more durable and because we drink water frequently, the water is not sitting in the jug for an extended period of time. Next up is avoiding using plastic kettles. This comes back to how extreme temperatures increases the chances of chemicals leaching out of the plastic and into the water. I totally had a plastic kettle all through college and it wasn't until our plastic one broke that we bought this glass and metal based option. This is totally only if it suits you and your situation, but you could consider replacing your plastic kettle once it's no longer working with a glass option. Third on the list is to not microwave takeaway food in the disposable plastic container it came in. I mean, I try to reduce the amount of single-use plastic that I use, but let's be honest, we've all ordered Uber Eats and sometimes if you can't finish all of the food, you chuck it into the fridge and you eat it the next day. Whenever I do have to heat up leftovers, I always transfer it onto a ceramic plate and heat it up on that instead of using the disposable container that the food came in. Last on the list is more of an indirect effect. If you avoided buying plastic bottled water and single-use disposable plastic, there's less plastic rubbish that's going out. If you didn't know what the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is, 
you can Google it. It's basically a giant collection of rubbish that's accumulated in the ocean. And with how our ocean currents work, it has formed basically a giant garbage island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Apparently, it's bigger than Texas. Anyways, the point is, is that with all of the plastic garbage in the ocean breaking down into microplastics, fish and smaller ocean creatures are eating these microplastics. When we eat these fish, we're eating the microplastics that they ate and have gotten into their bodies. This is a process called bioaccumulation, where the plastic has accumulated in their little fishy bodies and biomagnification, which is when we eat the plastics that have gotten into their bodies. So by reducing the amount of plastic waste that we generate, we're reducing the amount of plastic that contributes to this problem. All right, so that covers four ways that you can reduce the amount of microplastics that you're consuming. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. If you already knew about these things, or if you have other ideas on how to reduce microplastics, please drop me a comment down below because I'm always really keen to learn more and to hear from you guys. If you did enjoy this video, please do go ahead and click that like button down below and hit subscribe because it really helps to support my channel and I upload new videos every week on health and sustainability. Thank you and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!